Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 126. This episode is with Amy Sturdivant, who's so awesome. She is an actress, she is a stunt woman, and just a joy to talk to. Uh, we actually talked about how she started rock climbing as a kid, and I've never talked to anybody who's done that, so she gave me some pro tips. Maybe I'll be able to win a scooter one day at a fair. Uh, but she's she's so cool. Uh, we talked about how uh, she moved to Los Angeles from Seattle to get into stunts, and then what that was like, kind of getting the flow of things, how that stuff works. We talked about uh, her being a stunt double and what that's like. She was a stunt double for Xena. Well, not really Xena, but she was a stunt double for Lucy Lawless in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Missy Pyle in Pandemic. And uh, it's just so cool. It's so cool. Uh, so she talked about what that was like. She talked about how to fall down stairs, an important skill to know as a stunt performer. We talk about her doing mocap for different video games, working on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Captain Marvel, being a part of a high-speed chase in SWAT, which sounds amazing. Uh, we talk about uh, her work on The Mandalorian, which she got to play quite a few different characters. And what was cool about that was she got to play roles that were traditionally uh, for men. So it was cool that like she got to be a stormtrooper and like fall in that. And she talks about how... Uh, fun that is <laughs> and overcoming different things like that uh she's just great she's super great and she's a stunt performer whose last name has sturdy in it so how can you not love her she is fantastic uh let's just get right into it without further ado please enjoy the interesting podcast episode number 126 with amy sturdivant theme song time <laughs> Like there's no yeah. clouds, it doesn't rain, there's no humid. What is this place? Right. It's crazy. <laughs> I came from Seattle, so. Oh, wow. 360 for me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, the exact opposite. Does it, does it really rain all the time in Seattle? It does, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Does it get cold? Does it snow in Seattle? Yeah, every once in a while. Oh, my God. Yeah. Are you good with cold weather? I am not. Uh, not after moving down here. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your blood's thinned out. Yep, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That, that's another thing California has is all you can do like skiing in the morning and then sunset on the beach at night. And that just blows my mind that everything, yeah. it's all so there. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Insane. Sheesh. So how long ago did you move to California? Uh, seven years ago. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Do you liking it? Yeah, I love it. That's cool. That's cool. Did you move down there to get into the business? I did. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Was it so then I, I love talking to stunt people because it's such a specific thing to get into. It is. Yeah. Was, was stunts always the goal? Uh, no, I actually didn't know about stunts until um, about my last year of college. Really? Um, yeah. Just kind of found out about it. My dad sent me uh, an article on it on Hollywood stunts. Um, nice. And Good looking out, Dad. To, yeah, wanted to <laughs> check it out, and then decided I wanted to pursue it. So that's cool. Yeah. So I, I I assume if your dad's giving you stunt articles, you were into like physical stuff and. Yeah, kind of yeah. grew up. I uh, was always kind of physical and um, into sports at least. Um, cool. What'd you play? Uh, I did a lot of like the individual sports. So I grew up rock climbing. Um, indoor competitive rock climbing what? Uh, what? swimming yeah <laughs> kind That's of awesome yeah it's becoming a lot more popular now um yeah and track and field so did you ever do those like at the fair you know when it's like you can get a scooter if you can make it yeah <laughs> did you ever get a scooter i always well i don't i don't know if i ever went for a scooter oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i definitely always went on those when i got the chance so is there is there a secret to it don't tell me the secrets, Amy. Ew. To the fair ones. Do they do they rig it? Is there like ones that you grab and they fall off? Or is that just in my head? Um You just gotta be good. I've got enough fair ones. Yeah. <laughs> that I would know. That's fair. That's fair. You're like, I'm a professional, all right. What is, what is this? So you must have like crazy grip strength then. 
Just like... uh, did definitely more so growing up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, getting into it again now um, as an adult, kind of more recreationally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of stopped that uh, maybe around like right before high school. So. Right on, right on. So you're like, that's crazy. So is the break this down for me because I've done it obviously like at the fair and uh wasn't great at it uh do you find that it's more hands is it feet is it both like do you gotta look first give give me some pro tips here yeah i mean there's definitely some technique to it um a lot of people say trust your feet a lot of people tend to really grip over grip with their hands and um you know uh use their upper body strength too much um so you have to kind of your feet and um, your leg strength to kind of make up for that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot to it. Sure. Did you have the like the dust, the little pouch dust thing? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, is the chalk? That's chalk. Okay. It's, yeah. Yeah. Got so it. it. Just kind of drop your hands. Um, it's, it's like yeah. weightlifters. They got that whole thing. Yep. Same concept. Uh, okay. I know what I learned today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, are there was there like a gym or something you did that with 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 like all the pegs and you gotta there's courses. Yep. Yeah. There's um. It's definitely again becoming more popular having uh, indoor gyms sure, all across sure. you know the country all across the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know they were talking about putting it in the Olympics. Um. I'm not sure. Oh, that'd be cool. If that's, if that's happening, uh, I haven't really kept up with that. But sure. Sure. That's so cool. I would hope so. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, it would. You'd have that. You'd have that little girl that was able to do it. There's that video that went viral a while ago where it's like way high up, and then it's like over a pool, and they're like people are just falling, and this little girl is just like boop, 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 handles yeah. it. It was awesome. I was like, yeah. yeah, pretty cool. I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't make <laughs> it. That's cool though. That's so it's it's in the legs. All right, you gotta. Yeah, a lot okay. in the legs, and then you know, just being consistent and putting your time on the wall and sure anything. Uh, so slow and steady actually is a good idea, as opposed to just trying like mm, Spider Man. Yeah. Interesting. Sure. Okay. Okay. That explains it. Your dad's like, all right, you're used to. Did you ever fall? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. I'm seeing uh, the through yeah. line now into stunts. Right. <laughs> For sure. I, yeah, I don't think I've ever talked to anyone who like actually spent time getting good at it. Mm -hmm. that, that's a neat thing to do. Where you do you do you have to be flexible to do something like that? Because there's a lot of stretching and going for it. Yeah, do you there's, find? Some, there's some flexibility, but there's also kind of body positioning and figuring out how to um, use your leverage and and all that. Oh, so. okay, cool, cool. I'm gonna put you down as my coach, just <laughs> for later <laughs> on. Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of other people out there that'll probably give yeah. you some better. But. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So you could be my interim coach then. Sure. So, yeah. but but if I fall, I won't blame you. I'll be like, nope, just figure it out on my own. But if I win, I got you. There you go. <laughs> so for, try to win. Yeah, yeah. I'll do my best. <laughs> so you from Seattle? You're doing mm -hmm. rock climbing. You're into physical stuff, and then your dad's like, "How about stunts?" And you're like, "That's a great idea." And yeah. then you move down to LA to pursue that interesting how did so how did you even go about that did you just like throw yourself around la and they're like that's really good you should throw uh, yourself for us <laughs> no um i you know did what i could to kind of figure out there wasn't much on the internet at the time of course uh, about sense um so i came down and had kind of a glorified version of what it was like you know people hanging from helicopters and sure jumping off of buildings you know, building and yeah um yeah getting on fire and stuff um a lot of what i found out was that the bread and butter is kind of um fighting and falling to the ground oh, uh, and right. learning how to do that realistically um so uh yeah i kind of really got taken in by the fight community um cool. i didn't have a martial art background Oh. But, um, yeah, just having met and worked with a lot of people that came from more of the independent side of it, uh, independent films. Sure. And getting into mainstream, um, they kind of took me under their wing, kind of showed me the ropes. And uh, yeah. that's kind of how I got to where I am today is through those people like, uh, you know, Brian Sawyer, Manny Mancineras, Vlad Rimberg. Yeah. Um, that's kind of those guys. That's so, so cool. Right yeah. on. You like got into your own little community. 
that's the yeah. way that's the way to go it's mm-hmm. I, i've been a big fan of latif crowder for like since oh five when he was like zero gravity days i'm like this is just dude's making youtube videos and now he's like doing a ton of stuff and i'm like mm, good for you yeah, man <laughs> yeah i i right he's amazing. yeah he's great dude dude hey, sam luke another one they mm-hmm. they did a video called inmate 451 that when yeah. i was a freshman in high school i watched probably a hundred times and i was just like showing everybody i'm like look at this thing it's like you escape from jail and i'm like i know it isn't real but also it kind of is right right and that's that's cool that and also to not come from a martial arts background i find very rare a lot of people that are instants usually start out martial arts like was it was it a learning curve being that you didn't have that foundation? Yeah. So I feel like, um, I've kind of always been playing that catch up game. Yeah. Um, trying to get to kind of that level without the experience of having done it my whole life. Um, but at the same time, there are some differences with, um, you know, fighting for film or, uh, than there are martial arts. Um, but you know, I kind of, I had the advantage of, uh, I had a clean slate, and I didn't have to relearn or, you right. know, different bad habits or different habits. Um, so I was kind of able to have that clean slate, but at the same time have to be able to yeah. catch up, <laughs> get on the same page and, you know, figure it all out um, from ground zero, essentially. So Sure. I mean, I bet it helped that you were already active, at least, you know, so you have that. I think, yeah, I think that was definitely part of it, um, a big help, but... Uh, but yeah, still. also just kind of a lot of conversations with people and figuring out, um, you know, kind of how to carve that path. And, um, you know, I, I kind of started with trying to, um, learn everything for film and now Smart. I'm kind of backtracking and now going into the more traditional route of, okay, now I actually want to dive into, um, you know a lot of the reason behind the movements and sure. um, do more of the traditional going through the systems and learning that. But I did have to kind of start on the fast track and be like, okay, what can I use for film right now? And then what can I learn later on to kind of fill in those gaps that I do have? So Right. That's really cool, actually, that, that you went from the other side as opposed to the other way around because it is different. You're not actually like hitting people. In film, right. a lot of it is like the trick and like the dance of it almost. So mm-hmm. you were able to kind of, yeah, that's that's really cool that like you had this clean slate, but then also you still have to learn the technique without the base. That's right. that's a lot of mental workouts you got to do there. Yeah, I think um, learning without the base, like I said, kind of leaves some gaps um, that I had sure. to fill. Um, and. I think now going back and filling in those gaps, um, I feel like it's more making it more realistic and genuine and um, making there be more intention behind those movements. Right, um, right. So. How, how are you liking it? Uh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely love it now. That's so. cool. Do you find that one hand washes the other? That it really does build up in your brain having gone backwards? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's cool. Definitely. That's yeah. cool. So do, do you, because obviously there's mistakes that happen on set when things are really fast and really intense. Have you mm-hmm. been hit yet on set? And have you been hit yet in training the traditional system? And which one hurt worse? Uh, <laughs> um, yes to both. I definitely have been hit. Of course, um, of course. In, in training and uh, on set. But I don't know. I mean... I think it's all different in that, like, you know, a lot of times on set, it's because somebody um, didn't necessarily have that training. So it kind of comes out of nowhere. Right. Um, Where within training, it's kind of expected that, like, you know, everyone's learning and and all that. So Mm -hmm. um, it's like, it it hurts regardless. (laughs) Yeah, I think it hurts regardless. But um, a lot of the times it comes down to, like, making sure that person does, knows that like, it's okay. It's, you know, that's right, all. Yeah. About, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> starting about the, the pain and being like, okay, it's, it's fine. Like just sure. Like, figure out how to make that not happen again. Um, right. Right. But, yeah. That makes sense. Was, was getting into stunts, the idea of it different than the actual job? 
Like, was it different than you expected when you started? Uh, I really didn't have many expectations. Smart, um, smart. So smart. I didn't really know what I was, what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here I am, and I love it. And being on set is pretty incredible. Um, sure. It's at least what you would dream of as a kid. Um, right. Seeing behind the scenes or going to Universal and doing the whole backlot tour and being yeah. like, oh, this is, you know, this is what sure. it would be like. Um being on a film and it really it's um with those set pieces and characters coming together and sometimes you'll watch watch actors do their thing and be like wow i'm i'm living in a movie (laughs) in a movie right now (laughs) so um, yeah it's pretty crazy sure that's gotta be cool so do you do you remember your first like professional gig um yeah there was one to get um, Taft Heart lead, which means they kind of help you get into the union. Uh, that was kind of nice. more almost being like a background or specialty extra. Sure. Um, sure. But then my first actual gig was a motion capture. Um, what? Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of that as well. Um, in addition to TV and film, a lot of stunt performers do motion capture for video games as well. Right. Um, and I had never gotten any experience in that world. <laughs> I bet. That's so, so different. I was kind of deer in the headlights a little bit. Um, I was capable of doing what I was asked to do, but a lot of the other motion capture aspects of it, mm-hmm. I didn't know or understand. It was kind of overwhelming. Um, I bet. That was for, I believe it was a like Call of Duty. What? Um, no big deal. Yeah. yeah whatever. So. If, you, if you've heard of it. Uh, <laughs> Tom Williams um, was the coordinator on it, and cool. yeah, he was great. Um, and he knew that I was very new, luckily. Sure. Um, so he was able to kind of talk me through a lot of what was going on. But um, now going back and doing a lot of mocap, I love it. Um, yeah. Being able to create the environment and just imagine the place that you're in, and um, you kind of have to just use random props that don't. Right. You know, <laughs> what they are. Like, use a pool noodle for a gun. Um, yeah. In that way. Uh, and you don't get that luxury of having the set pieces around you. So. Right. You almost have to play more. Mm-hmm. Like, that's cool. I, I also love to hear when, like, people are able to learn on the job. Because mm-hmm. I, I feel like, me, definitely myself, I feel like I have this idea that you have to already know everything before you get the job. And that's it. But it's kind of cool to hear that, like, you can get it and they'll work with you and it becomes a full collaboration to pick up these new skills. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Yeah, I think you do definitely pick up skills along the way um, on every set that you're on. Definitely. No matter the experience. um, Just working with different people every single time, you Mm -hmm. have to learn how to adapt and learn how to work with different people or communicate in a different way or um, whatever. Right. Did, Did the motion capture suit... Mm-hmm. How fun was that? Uh, was it? Is it a one size fits all? You're like, yeah, you're about a, a, a small, and then you get this, and then you're like, okay, maybe. I don't, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like wearing pajamas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like a Velcro type, yeah, pajama suit. There you go. Uh, I know that those are kind of changing also. Mm-hmm. Um, the ones that I've been in uh, are kind of that Velcro where they put the dots all over you. Sure. Um, but there's new technology now that are coming out um, where you they have like some wires kind of built in and you can actually oh. do it in a space. Um, really? Yeah. It's, That's cool. It's, you know, taking over and changing yeah. a lot. Um, For real. But yeah, it's pretty cool to see that as well. I haven't had the experience of doing too much of that. But. Right, right. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's pretty neat. I, it's I, all I love that you're going in with it as like, I don't know, let's just let's just see what this is. And they're like, all right, mocap. You're like, whoa, I said stunts. What is it? All right, sure, let's do this. And then Call of Duty. All right, that's pretty neat. Yeah. That's pretty sure. neat. Are the floors padded when you do those mocap stuff? Uh, they are not. Uh, <laughs> sometimes for, for bigger stunts, you're able to use pads. But a lot of times um, you need to put a panel mat over them. To have kind of that harder surface. Sure. Uh, because if you see somebody fall, it kind of creates that um, dip. Oh. 
That's pretty neat. Was that when you when you did that? Like, what's going through your head having been handed mocap in the stunts? Because it seems like they're not the same thing. Um, it's a lot of the same movement and still storytelling. Right. Um, a lot of times we get hired to do more of the physical stuff, and then sometimes we'll have actors come in and do, um, you right. know, different things. Like I know the Call of Duty. Um, one, yeah, they had like three people on the same character doing the same thing, you know. Oh, so right. you can kind of entertain oh, right. people for various um, aspects of it. Oh, that's cool. I, that actually that, yeah. that reminds me. I, I had somebody on here one time that talked about there are, there's like the action actor, and then there's like the performance actor that does like the cut scenes and stuff like that. But then you have like stunt people like yourself. They're like, oh, if they need to get blown up by a grenade, they're not gonna ask that guy to do it. So let's get somebody right. else in here. Interesting. Yeah, and the voice actor and and all that. That can all be separate. Right, um, right. Properties, yeah. So, are you pretty good at being thrown by now? Uh, I would think so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah or throwing myself, I guess. Um, sure, sure. Actually, I think I saw a video you posted of you like going downstairs, just like. Bup, 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 bup. Sure. How, yeah. How do you do that and not hurt yourself? Um, you kind of try your best to just, uh, tuck into the stairs. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> as best as you can. But honestly, I am guessing the one that you saw might have been on Instagram. Um, yeah, that's the one. That yeah. specific one, they were able to pad it, uh, as much as they could. Oh. So that was with high density pad. Sure. Uh, you always get that luxury, but yeah. that was the luxury <laughs> that I had because I was, um, in a dress at the time and didn't have much to to add sure but yeah you just kind of i had a plan going into it uh to roll back once and then turn sideways and then continue rolling down that way mm -hmm. but with momentum you kind of have to make split second decisions um halfway down i was like okay I, i'm going a lot faster i'm not really able to turn so i need to figure out how to land safely knowing that i only have a few steps left um so i'll need to turn at this point and then you just kind of I think it's it's more about repetition, realizing where you're at um, in the air, uh, and that comes with time. Because I remember early on trying stair falls, it was not as <laughs> fun as uh, how I'm able to now at least know where I'm at uh, in space. Sure, that's so. amazing. You're literally going by. So it doesn't. There's no way it feels good. It's gotta hurt. Yeah, it doesn't always feel great. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> So that, that's all kind of part of it. Sure. It's all the love of it. Yeah. So are you just always bruised at one point or another, like something is aching? Or are you like, nah, I got iron skin now? Yeah, no, I, I get bruises for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it just depends on what I'm doing. Sure. More sure. So, more often than not. Um, sometimes even being in a in a harness will bruise me. So. Oh, yeah. Do you do those? What are they called? Uh, like when they jerk you back real fast? Have you done those yet? Yeah, ratchets. Ratchets, that's the word. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you do those knock the wind out of you? Um like where do you feel like you're getting pulled from? Cuz I know you have a vest and yeah, then you're you like locked in and they just uh -huh. pull you back. You definitely want to make sure that's as tight as you can get it, your vest. Right. Um but usually they'll pull you into something and that's probably the impact that you yeah. feel. <laughs> um, sometimes like your neck, you really have to brace. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cause so. that's not in the vest. You just, Oh my God. This is, yeah. I mean, it's There's like in hindsight, it's pretty cool, <laughs> but during, <laughs> who man. So I know you've done a lot of like double work as well. Is that, do you find that that's different in any way from the other stuff that you do? Um, it, it is. Yeah. I feel like, um, with that, you really have to pay attention to your actor. Um, you're kind of watching every step that they take and, um, not only with blocking, but just their body movement as well. You kind of have to adapt yours to make it look like you're walking like them or, um, have those same kind of mannerisms because everyone has their own personal mannerisms. Um, and then on top of that for the character, they might be making certain choices for that character. Right. Uh, you have to really just kind of pay attention to and um, and then do yourself leading up to whatever stunt it is that you're doing. 
gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. H- have you been set on fire yet? I have. Um, not for anything professionally, but just for just fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just in yeah. your spare time. What are you doing Friday? Uh, I'm gonna light myself on fire. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right on. Is it the whole like gel thing where you like cover yourself and stuff or? Oh. Yeah, um, but with that, you definitely want to obviously make sure you're with the right people and have the right equipment and all of that because um, it can get out of hand. So, yeah, it's not kind of just – for me, it's not like a let's just do this thing on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's make sure we have this you know, group of people um, and you know, have all the, the safety measures. So Yeah. Was it scary the first time you did it? Um, I think – the everything leading up to it um just being like hey don't breathe this in uh oh, you know yeah. you don't smoke inhalation um those kinds of things make you more nervous but make you more aware of what's going on um so i think probably the first time i did it it was more about okay am i am i doing this right rather than about performance <laughs> sure sure it's like just checking the boxes of like all right this is a go this is a go don't do this that right. Makes, that makes sense. You're too focused to worry about it. Right. That's pretty neat. So have you have you done it more than once then? Uh, I've only done two burns. Yeah. Two. That's yeah. still. You you were on you were on fire, Amy. You're on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's kind of a, a strange feeling. It's not natural, obviously. So. Sure. Um, your brain is telling you no, just like anything with jumping off of something. Um, of, oh right. Uh, your, your brain and body are like, what are you doing? This isn't what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So it's everything against what you've ever learned. But um, yeah, you just kind of learn how to focus and almost kind of meditate through it and um, go through those check boxes and make sure everything's safe. Sure. That's like, it's crazy now that you're saying that. It makes me think of like the mental fortitude it takes to become a stunt performer. It's like there's so much. There's the physical side of it where you have to be able to physically perform the sun. But there's mm-hmm. so much in your head that you have to do first of like throw myself down the stairs. Your brain's like, hey, how about we don't? And you're like, ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that definitely comes with time and experience and getting comfortable with something. Right, right. Yeah. Ha- have you had any injuries yet? Uh, no major injuries, no. There you go. There you go. So- that's my trick question I give to stunt performers. And yeah. almost everyone is like, nope. And I'm like, yeah, I see what you're doing here. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be the one guy that's like, I broke both my arms. And it's like, ah, that's why you're not a stunt performer anymore. I get right. it. <laughs> that's yeah, I mean, pretty good. obviously injuries happen. Um, and a lot of people probably won't talk about them even if they have happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not me. I haven't actually have had any major injuries. Um, but, you know, you get bumps and bruises and... Totally. Aches and pains, and it all comes with it, so. For sure, for sure. Was it Definitely co- not a chiropractor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, yeah. I, do you find you have to, like, do a little more body maintenance than normal? Uh, yeah, I think it's become uh, more of a priority for me recently. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, I've kind of just trained through it for many years already, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. where now I'm kind of like, okay, let's slow down. Let's, you know, I, I started doing yoga probably like a year or so ago just to kind of, cool. have that, you know, um, stretching. I'm, I'm not able to kind of just go into things anymore without stretching. Like, right, right. As a, you know, you can't just go, get up and run and, you know, do whatever, um, without that now. So yeah, body maintenance is definitely a priority. Um, yeah, just kind of. Again, doing that checklist of okay, what about my <laughs> what about my body is not yeah. intact. <laughs> um, I'm not supposed to be clicking. I don't. What is that? What is yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, how are you yeah. liking yoga? I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really good. Um, you know, again, it's kind of one of those meditative things that you're just in there, and um, I like hot yoga. Um, oh, it's cool! Just, there you go. Right? It's just nice. I like being warm. Sure. Though. Um, yeah, it's warm all the time, but, um, yeah, I think it's just a really good, um, process of going through and, um, you know, keeping things in check. Sure. Kind of really 
looking inward and seeing where um, you see tightness or tension or uh, anything like that. So, Right. You have to become hyper aware because your body is your instrument. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Was it cool being Xena's stunt double? Uh, yes, it was very cool. Um, <laughs> that was again. That was one of my first jobs, actually. Um, right. My on. first like TV job um, was Agents of Shield, doubling her for a special of when she came in. Sure. Um, and yeah, that was a knife fight. Um, yeah, and there yeah. were a lot of very talented experienced people around me uh that made it made my job a lot easier so um just yeah knowing kind of her status and everything um i know i i tried to keep professional and all that um but sure. kind of having the back of your mind obviously adds a little more pressure <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally yeah i didn't realize she was from new zealand until like six months ago Oh, yeah? Had no idea. I don't know why. Maybe just because, you know, she's Xena. Uh, right. But, yeah, I heard her in an interview, and I was like, what is that accent? What? Yeah. What? She's a Kiwi? Had no idea. Uh, Had no idea. Yeah. Blew my mind. Kind of one of those things that just kind of flies by. Yeah. Sure. You know, like, but... It's like when you, when, you don't see, when you don't see them off of camera, you're like, oh, the, the person. Got it. She's not, right. a, she's not actually Xena. Yeah. Damn it. But yeah. that, that's, do you find that the job is different depending on the scale of the job that you're working on? Or is it like the job's the job regardless? Um, I think there's definitely differences. Um, a lot of times I see a lot more safety measures when it comes to bigger sets. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's, you know, obviously an insurance thing or a budget mm -hmm. thing. Um, totally. But a lot of times if you're asked to do let's say a student film or a independent film a lot of times you don't have those luxuries of having like a high dense mat that you can put down and they can paint out and right and bigger stunts so yeah like if you could land on the couch that would be great <laughs> yeah, backwards it does um but yeah it's kind of one of those things that you just take the jobs that make sense and sure yeah, yeah. Is it stressful, like, so you mentioned you worked on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Which is, at that point, already established. You're, like, seasons deep in. And I know right. TV works so fast. Yeah. Was there even more pressure on that set specifically because it's already established, you're kind of coming into it, and it moves so quickly? Or is it back to that, like, you've got the mental fortitude of being like, let's get this done? Um, yeah, they were definitely trying to move quickly. Uh, we were able to do one rehearsal day, which was nice, um, cool. beforehand, which mm -hmm. sometimes you don't have the luxury of that. A lot of the times you don't have the luxury of that. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, it, depends. it depends on the set. Sometimes they'll, um, be really into like making sure everything's done on the, on the front end of it. Right. When it comes to like, if they do previs or. Um, and rehearsals and the rehearsals with the actors and all that. Um, so it really depends on which production you're on and how they kind of go about that process. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you just kind of have to learn on the day or on the minute and just be like, okay, this is what we're doing. It's all come together. Let's make it work. Sure. Um, yeah. So there's definitely, there's always pressure and there's always pressure put on stunts. Um, definitely. Just because... Yeah, sometimes it's pushed to the back as like, uh, okay, if we get to that, then we'll have that and that'll be great. But let's m at least focus on the story and make sure that we have all that, the dialogue that we need and make sure everything is great with the actors. Sure. And then we'll do it. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. What did you do on Chicago PD? Um, I've done... Should I do a couple... Uh, I know I doubled on that um, for one of the police officers. Um, she was getting dragged out of a car. Um, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, I know that that was one of them. I'm trying to remember. I I think it was Chicago PD. Um, there was a big fire in a new station, and I can't quite remember if I had to like drag someone out or, or what the case was. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I love working in Chicago. Yeah, um, the guys out there are, are really great. Um, it feels more family oriented. Um, sure. 
kind of that community out there is very um, close knit because it's a lot smaller. Sure, sure. But yeah, cool. I didn't realize that shot in Chicago. That's cool. Yeah, there's um, there's definitely a small little uh, like community out there that's shooting. They get the opportunity to do a few bigger movies every once in a while, like um, Divergent. I know was a big one that was shot out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's cool. There's definitely there. a lot of people that I know that live in LA um, are actually from there as well. So. Really? Okay. That's pretty. I think the the big things I know is that, like obviously the shy and like shameless is like a big thing as well uh, for stuff like that. Yeah. So it's got to feel pretty neat if you're on a plane flying to Chicago to work on like a set. That that's pretty neat. You yeah. do, you're doing something right if that's happening. Cool. Um. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to go out there uh, because they don't have anyone my size. Um, oh, right. right. So I know a lot of the times when those come up, um, since I've worked with them before, the first time they kind of took a shot with me because I, did, I hadn't worked with any of them. Right. Um, but having gone out there, now I kind of know the community and the, the stunt coordinators out there that they're – they'll call me up when they need somebody, um, a female my size. There you go. It's all, it's all networking and who you know and like building up the work and reputation. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, definitely. I'm into that. I'm into that. And then, well, at this time it's, it's, it's kind of ironic, but you worked on pandemic. So good job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So was, who knew that that would be a, uh... who knew, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that Missy Pyle's pretty amazing. Oh, Missy Pal's great. That's so yeah, cool. She's cool. Really awesome. Um, my favorite of hers is from Galaxy Quest, actually. Oh, yeah. Gotta be. Gotta be. <laughs> we need your help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Galaxy Quest is golden. To, yeah. this, to this day, totally holds up. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Totally holds up. So she's got to be cool. Oh, she's really cool. And then a yeah. big movie like that. Not bad. Not bad, Amy. You're doing all right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been pretty fun. Pretty yeah. Fun. Right on, right on. And then you work, so you've done, your first video game was like Call of Duty. How many mm -hmm. video games have you done since then? Because you've definitely done more than one. Yeah, um, I've done a lot more cinematic trailers recently. Oh, sweet. Um, Those are fun. What was it? For Borderlands and Elder Scrolls worked on some recent ones that were done. What? Yeah. No, no big deal, whatever. What? That's cool. What are you doing those? Yeah. Borderlands is like Mad Max. Yeah, so they were cinematic uh, trailers, so I kind of played a couple of different characters in the Borderlands one. Nice. Um, and then Elder Scrolls, you'll see a tall woman um, with an axe. Um, and maybe a couple of them. Yeah, and then, then just playing those other surrounding characters as well sometimes. Um, That's so just, cool. You're essentially, there's a small group. Um, that they bring in to be performers. Mm -hmm. So you don't only just get to be that one character, but you also get to be sometimes the characters that you're fighting. <laughs> what? You get to fight yourself? Yeah. Or, um, yeah. It's how, how cool is that? Composite to together. So They're like mini animated movies. Yeah, definitely. That's so fun. They're, they're definitely getting to that. <laughs> it seems like. Um, yeah, especially they're... quality, but now it's like insane. Yeah. yeah. I, I have noticed a lot of like um, uh, other stunt friends that I have as well. That is like the the thing now is like mm -hmm. cinematic trailers for games. And it's like yeah. they're bringing a lot of real stunt people and actors and like make this thing that you don't. I feel like a lot of people don't really realize that, like how many people are behind these things because it's animated. You think like, oh, this is just done on the computer and they're on. And you're like, no, right. that those are people. That mm -hmm. are just like painted over with these. It's like that's a yeah. human skeleton in there. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You don't think about it, but they can scale it however they need to, or make you whatever character you need to be. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. But it gives that kind of more genuine human aspect to it. Yeah, that I think you would get with animation as much as you kind of study that human anatomy and how people move. Um, actually, having somebody there as the template for it, I think is pretty important. I think so too. I think it like actually gives it life. As yeah. As opposed to like, you can have like a body there, but it's not going to do anything when you add life to it. Like it really shows in the final product. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Do you have any characters that like you really like playing? 
Like when you when you get the call, you're like, oh sweet, I get to carry an axe this time. You know, or like any of those types. Um, I, I like playing all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you're like the ones like that have my name I... next to them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, I definitely um, enjoy the variety of what I've been able to play. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the times it has been like stronger female characters or Hell you yeah. can't tell that those are um, what's behind that character. Yeah. Uh, mask. Um, but yeah, kind of just being able to, um, like I've said in other, like talking with other people is um, that I've, I'm kind of in that place right now where Hollywood is figuring out what it means to be a strong female character. Yeah. Um, so there's kind of an interesting transition phase and trial and error and um, figuring out what that is. But it's cool that I get to be a part of that and that this is kind of the time for that to be happening. Hell yeah. I love that yeah. they have like a strong female that's behind it. That's, that's what you need. As opposed to like, here's my idea of what that is. It's like, how about we actually get someone in here who knows what that is, and then just do you. And oh, that's what that is. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, yeah. What did you do on Sorry to Bother You? Um, I was actually um, uh, the one of the riot police on. The oh, riot. sweet. So you weren't able to see who I was. Um, and I believe I also played uh, a protester as well and other scenes fighting yourself yeah (laughs) (laughs) mostly the the riot police um which obviously now is um interesting to look back on yeah yeah (laughs) it's it's so weird i (laughs) i was i was editing an episode that i recorded weeks ago because we record these weeks out ahead and i was like oh right yes this was before the world crumbled look at how happy we sound (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's so weird to think about yeah. Yeah. And sorry yeah. sorry to bother you. Great movie. Also the weirdest movie I've ever seen. Very strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took There's took a such a turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. And then I, I've seen I've seen on your Instagram that you got to be a a, a scroll in Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Was that one of your first times doing like prosthetics? It was, yeah. So they actually um brought me in uh into legacy effects. And used my face as like the template for um, oh, cool. girls. Uh, so they did the whole, um, you know, plastering things on and like. You did the live cast? The whole live cast. How was that? Um, it was really interesting. It was really cool to see. Um, you kind of just sit in the chair and let them do their thing and um, breathe through a straw and, <laughs> you know, uh, those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're walking you through it and then. Uh, I believe they also did kind of a scan of your face as well. Cool. Um, to help in the process. But, yeah, it was cool to kind of see how they start from the beginning with um, building the prosthetics and then um, getting it tacked on and being a part of that process because it's definitely a long process every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man. So. How many hours <laughs> were you in the chair? Uh. We got it down to, I think it was three or four hours. Wow. Well um, done. It was a lot longer to start. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they have different um, makeup artists kind mm. of uh, assigned to you. Um, cool. I had Carlton and Kale, and they were great. And they, you know, you want those people um, to be with you for that amount of time yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> around and um you know trying to make it fun at you know three or three in the morning or something whenever you have to come in to get that done yeah but Ooh. you, got, you gotta there. want it everyone loves it though um which yeah. i think is great everyone loves the job that they're doing and um i think that's my favorite part about it is that you see that passion from every department that's there trying to make it all come together for the same collective story yeah i agree it's it may especially if you're spending so much time together it's like you don't want that one person to be a dick you're like just be cool you know <laughs> like yeah it was well i know it's early and everyone's grumpy but let's just exactly we're all let's get together <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that that's pretty cool though you got to be a scroll that's a big deal i like that's a full 
prosthetic job that takes a lot of time on a big production movie. Like, you're doing some right to end up in that chair. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. I, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, a really great team. Sure. So, and and yeah, um, again with that, I got to learn so much. Um, just by working with the riggers, a team of um, people rigging up the wires oh, for yeah. the different the different stunts. Um, it's amazing to see them work and see them, you know, problem solve and figure out, um, how to accomplish certain looks for, um, different gags. So it's, I, I like to just sit back and watch everything happen and take notes. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. That's the best, best way to learn is on set, like pay attention, you know? mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And legacy effects, I mean, they're the best. They're the best yeah. of the best. Mm-hmm. I had uh, I had Brian Seip on uh, a month or two ago, and he yeah. just kept talking about, like, the big thing on specifically the Marvel movies and stuff was time. So when you said, like, it was a lot longer and they kept getting it down and down and down, it's like, that's his specialty. I was like, oh, yeah. oh that's so cool. That's so cool. Brian is a professional. He is amazing. He's the greatest. He... Greatest. <laughs> what a legend. Yeah. And he's so nice. Like, he is. Dude, I, love, I love seeing him. <laughs> I, dude, I could go all day on how nice that guy is. He's like, you wouldn't yeah. realize the like all the amazing things he's done talking to him. He's like, oh yeah, no, I did do that. I was, huh? I'm like, yeah. no, dude, you don't. You, what? Listen, you shouldn't even be talking to me right now. Like, well done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's so humble and like so genuine. Um, such a family guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's, the he's best. great. The best. And so that was that. Sh- that was shot in Atlanta. Um, Captain Marvel. There was some yeah. shot there. Um, I was at the in the LA unit. Oh, sweet! There some there. Mm-hmm. Right on, right on. Have you have you been blown up yet? So it's like been near an explosion and tossed yeah. across. It. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is um, it, and sometimes is it fun? they do those explosions further away or um, in post, but yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's. Sometimes it takes you by surprise, for sure. Oh, really? Um, you know, they, they say it's going to be loud, but you don't realize how loud sometimes. Oh, really? But, yeah, you definitely you listen to the pyro guys and see, you know, um, how far things can project out and, and all that. So, sure. Yeah. That's so cool. There's, like a, there's a part of my brain that's always wanted to see an explosion. Obviously, where nobody gets hurt, just for the record. Yeah. But just to see it. Like, I just think that'd be so cool, just a massive... Is it? It's loud. Oh yeah, that's pretty Definitely cool. Loud. <laughs> I think there's like a primal side of me that's like, yeah, it's loud. Cool. Right. Like I don't, I don't know why I'm into that, but I am. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, everyone loves. You got that. to be right. Yeah. Like, it's, like, it's, 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 yeah. Feeling of that force and like just something happened. There's action happening and you're there and it's yeah, crazy. That's neat. That's do neat. you have a favorite stunt to do? Like ratchet or getting thrown and like stair falls. Like, is there is there one in particular you get a little excited about? Um, I like being in a harness and getting to yeah, fly, whether it's being thrown into something or whatever that is. Sure. Um, that's probably yeah one of my favorite things. Um, it's all dependent. On sure. Sun is. Um, I think my one of my favorite shows that I was able to do. Um, so far. I don't know why I think SWAT was one of my favorites is just because oh. I shoot guns and be a part of like a, a high speed chase um, kind of thing in the back of, of a truck. What? Um, and then there is a very um, experienced uh, stunt driver behind us that got to go off of a pipe ramp literally within feet of me um, and his car flips and then we have another car come and like, uh, block it so that he doesn't roll too far and just being in that I was like this is <laughs> I'm I'm this is huge um oh my I'm so God. close to the action of what's going on um yeah it was wild so what what a crazy thing to live through it's like when you watch the movies you're like all right cool but you're like no I saw a car flip over me like what does that do to your head yeah it's crazy <laughs> oh that's so awesome just walking away from that like did that did that just happen? Um, yeah, <laughs> you're just like your adrenaline is going nuts. You're like, oh, what is real? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That I think that's a good reason it's your favorite, though. That's fair. For sure. 
I so I'm assuming that like because you got Captain Marvel, right? That's legacy effects. And that was only mm-hmm. a few years ago. Is that what led to the Mandalorian? Because there's a lot of crossover there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Um, none of the coordinators that were on Captain Marvel are involved with Mandalorian. Oh. Um, it was a different kind of team of stunt performers. So I don't think that that's what led to it. Interesting. Um, Did you have to audition we, for it? No. Um, nice. nice. I got to know Ryan Watson. Um, Great stunt- dude on Mandalorian um and he brought me in to be all sorts of characters um and I kind of trained a little bit with those guys that um are the stunt team within Mm -hmm. Mandalorian yeah Uh, so I think that that's kind of where that came from that's cool Um, completely unrelated but both very awesome to be a part of yeah I'd say I mean it's the two biggest franchises in the world you got Marvel and Star Wars yeah amazing not bad and Ryan seems like the nicest dude ever. Yeah, so nice. Very chill, you know. Yeah. Um, even tempered. Even tempered. So. Yeah. Which is kind of what you need, I think, in this sort of industry. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Did you have to do? Because uh, I I remember you posted like all the different characters you got to play in the Mandalorian, which is amazing that you have mm-hmm. that sort of range. And I think you even mentioned that like you got to play roles that were traditionally for men which is even right. cooler that you got to do those things. It was like, no, it's just get the best performer in there regardless. And you got to wear yeah. helmets, you got prosthetics, you got all kinds of stuff. Like, how cool was that? Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing that I've been able to, you know, have coordinators really vouch for me to be able to play those roles. Sure. Because um, it easily could have just, you know, thrown in another guy and um, let that be that. And nobody would have asked questions and um, whatever. But... Um, being able to take on those roles and kind of prove that women can do them as well. Um, Hell yeah. Especially if you're not seeing their faces, like why not? I agree. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it hasn't just been Mandalorian. Um, somehow my career in the last couple of years, um, I've had a number of stunt coordinators put me in as, like I said, riot gear or, um, yeah, just sometimes with a mask or with armor or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, it's been it's been really interesting, um, but been really cool that those those people are willing to kind of go out of their way and make these positions, um, you know, available to me. So. Yeah, I love it. I love yeah. it. And and it's also a testament to you though because you we're able to rise to the occasion. You know what I mean? It's like, sure. traditionally speaking, it could be seen as a risk, but also not because you're good at what you do. Uh, I think, you know, everyone's been very kind and I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really take any of that as like my own doing necessarily. Um, sure. That's my but... job. I can give it to you. You don't have to sure. take it. <laughs> yeah, um, because I, I, haven't had to like necessarily audition for those parts with stunts you don't you just get to know coordinators and they're the ones that hire you and right kind of do that legwork um and getting you on the shows sure so i owe all of that to those people that have put me in those positions um sure sure of course working as hard as i can to make sure i live up to what they're i don't know what they've said you right, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want them to talk up <laughs> my, my skill set. Right, right. But it's definitely motivating, and, um, you know, I want to make sure I do the best job that I can and um, continue to learn and grow from those and um, kind of continue on that path because I really enjoy doing those characters um, where, you know, you're not going to see who it is. Um, but the people in the community or in the industry are taking notice. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, maybe the viewers don't know, but um, the people that matter around me um, at least kind of see that and see that that's a possibility and can continue, you know, just on that path of allowing those to be opened up to, to women. Sure, sure. That's a, that, see, that's the service that I provide as well. I like to say that I give credit where it's due. That is the un... That's the motto of the show. I'm like, oh, yes, you know that person that you really like? Here's who's inside of them. This is Misty Rosas. Get used to it. Sure. I love it. 
How so, I love that. How many episodes did you work on on the Mandalorian? Because I know, it was a f- judging by all the pictures, it was definitely a few. Um. Yeah, I'd say it was the majority of them. Um, nice. Bits nice. and pieces here and there. Sure. Um, I know that there are probably maybe one or two that I wasn't in. Sure. Um, but yeah, generally, it's it was most of them. Right on. Did you have to get life casted again? Because you were an alien in the no. Middle. So that one's that one was actually different. Um, that was also legacy, but they had these prosthetic masks. Um, oh. So you just slip it over your head, and um, hopefully it fits your head. Hopefully your head's not too big. <laughs> um, I don't know how they made that work necessarily, but um, yeah, they just kind of assigned one to you, and um, it's very thick prosthetic type material. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's hot. <laughs> I <laughs> but, bet. I bet. But, uh, it takes away the, you know, having to go in early and get all of this done because um, that takes hours. So, uh, right. Yeah. It oh, was pretty that's cool, cool that they can accomplish it that way as well. Yeah. That's really cool. Because I really, because yeah. it looks really good. Like the picture mm-hmm. you showed, I was like, I thought it was a prosthetic or like an animatronic or something. But the fact that it was like a pullover is pretty amazing. Yeah, um, and luckily we were able to take those off a lot of the times. Um, sure, yeah, to breathe. <laughs> just, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really cool what they're doing with the Mandalorian, um, how they're kind of incorporating, yeah, those masks and and animatronics. Um, mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it's crazy, the technology that they're putting into it now. Yeah, and to think it's only going to get better as time oh, goes yeah. on. Do you, I I saw a picture of you in stormtrooper armor. Mm-hmm. How did you find it being able to move in that? Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can see it's the pain in your eyes, Amy. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely quite a challenge. You have to get used to it. Um, somewhat heavy, but it just wasn't necessarily made for a human. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, they kind of made the, the molds, and and we were using. Um, the same, uh, like costumes that like that they've used in the in the films beforehand. Oh right. So, um, they yeah they're kind of passed along, and it's kind of if you fit it, then you fit it. But if not, then you know sure. sorry part. Um, but yeah, so the molds of it, uh, you kind of have to learn where to put different gels because there's a lot of different parts where it pinches and where it oh, yeah. uh, rubs and. And all that, um, and then falling in it. Um, oh boy! Like it's kind of an armor, so it kind of helps a little bit. But at the same time, there's other pieces <laughs> that are gonna bruise you no matter what, no matter how you fall. So, um, yeah, definitely a lot of bruises from that. Um, but I mean, it's so funny watching everyone try to get up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You kind of have to do this awkward, like, roll over and then, like, straddle as much as you can and then kind of lift your upper body up. Um, right. It's, it's, it's so funny. That's so, hilarious. It's, uh, yeah, because the plates with the thighs and the legs is all one, so you got to kind of, like, you can't really bend anywhere. Yeah, not really. <laughs> That's so funny. So you kind of learn how to make it work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did, did you ever break any of them? Oh, they broke, like... Yeah, all the time. yeah, I figured. Yeah. I figured. <laughs> the costume department was like, "Can you just not fall that hard?" <laughs> We're like, "I don't know what to tell you." Right, and, like uh, that's yeah. gravity. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Jeez, that's yeah. pretty pretty good though. Pretty good. What, yeah, it's a fun costume though to be a, be in and just like put that helmet on. Yeah, you know, with realizing you, know, you are what you are. So much, so much vision in those helmets. You can oh, yeah. see everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've put yeah. on a Stormtrooper helmet. Oh. It's... Yeah. I, I, I mean, can, it is what it is. I, I can't kind of imagine trying to do a stunt in it. It's like, there's yeah. so many... Th- it's all about timing and position and like, well, figure it out, I guess. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why that char- that character was, uh, you know, kind of designed to look a little more clunkier, you know, right, less, right, less right. 
spirit, I guess. Maybe people weren't able to do certain things. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm trying to shoot at this, but... That's yeah. right. That's the real reason they can't shoot anything is because, well, they can't see anything. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> They're just trying their best, all right? Yeah. Was there a job looking back that, like, you feel like you got a lot from? Like, was a real learning experience of, like, oh, this was this was a lot? Um, Cause I imagine every job you take something from it. I really think it's, it's pretty much every job yeah. is always a thing. Um, you know, I learned a lot, especially at the beginning by making mistakes. Sure. Um, I think that's kind of important to really recognize. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, um, you really just kind of pay attention to what everyone's doing around you and, um, peers that have been in it for a long time and kind of figure that out. So sure. Yeah. I mean, it's all learning. It's always learning. And I think that that will always be the case. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the best people that have the longevity and anything are the ones that are always learning. Because yeah. when you stop, it's like if you're not if you're not growing, you're dying kind of mentality. Uh, if you think that you're, you know, at your prime of what, what you're going to do, then you're not um, really contributing as much as you probably could. So True. And nobody wants to work with somebody like that either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there any, uh, well, what, what's the, what's the toughest stunt that you've done so far that either was tough to figure out or tough to execute? Are there any that stick out in your head? Um, I think I've been pretty fortunate that those who have hired me have known that what my skill set is. Sure. Um, I've definitely been challenged in pushing um, my comfortability with a lot of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I think those jobs have kind of been catered towards what they know that I can do. Smart. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's necessarily one that sticks out. Um, mm-hmm. as somebody asking me that something that's way beyond my ability. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. You've had good leadership. That's not like, Hey, yeah. deep end. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, there's definitely those cases that I've heard of where people get thrown into the deep end, and um, yeah. but I'm I'm kind of trying to minimize that and learn as much as I can before I'm able to take jobs that will require those skills. So. There you go. That makes sense. That makes sense. Is there any advice you would give to somebody who wants to get into what you're doing then? Um, just train hard, I guess. Um, yeah. And, get to know people, learn to, learn to ask questions and really listen to their answers. Um, everyone comes from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think just kind of hearing that out and then making a decision for what works best for you in your career uh, is good. But, um, and then I think it's best to just kind of reevaluate all the time. Just kind of look, um, step back out of what you're doing and see where improvements can be made. Um, you know, if you feel like you're stuck and you're not getting work, then why is that? Um, kind of reevaluate, is it something that you're doing or something that you're not doing? Um, but then also realize that it takes time. Uh, it takes at least five years unless you really get to know somebody right off the bat that gives you those opportunities. But, um, like any career, it's going to take time to kind of build that up and, build people's trust in you because a lot of the industry is built on trust um, sure. and what, you, you know, um, what your skill sets are and what people think you can um, provide uh, safely, I guess, on set. So, sure. That makes I think, sense. I think it's just one of those things that you have to realize. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's all about safety and um, your performance is very much a reflection of the people that hire you. Um, right. So those people will be confident in you. So, yeah. That's good. That's good. Evaluate. Know what's going on. Train your best. Just be present. Seems pretty important. Mm-hmm. And then put in the work. I think so. I like yeah. it. I like it. And just like that, we've been talking for over an hour. We did it. <laughs> hey, hey. This was super right. fun. Thank you so much for hanging out and talking. And, Thank man. you for having me. Yeah, Hi, of course. Of course. I mean, 
Thanks for agreeing. <laughs> of course. This is way fun. Um, so before I let you go, uh, I got to ask, where can people find you online? Um, I think Instagram probably is the main one. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's amy dash third I think so. Uh, I think so. Um, and then I start to put out more, I'm starting to put out more content with YouTube. Um, I kind of have a very small page right now, but if you want to check those out, you're welcome to as well. Um, probably just type in my name Love should it. come up. I hope yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm not, I'm not great at social media. So me um, I'm the worst. People, but welcome to email me if you want to ask questions. So sweet. Also, I can't let you go and not bring to account i love that you're a stunt woman and your last name has sturdy in it yeah <laughs> pretty good pretty good yeah i love it i love it <laughs> yeah get the mileage out of it all you can yeah will do love it and Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.